All right, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about our solar system. So Dylan and I have just moved off grid. We've lived here for about a month, but we've been renovating this cabin for the past nine months or so. We recorded the whole thing. You can check it out on our Going Off Grid in Kentucky playlist. But today I'm just focusing on explaining our solar system and what we decided to go with. We bought our system from Wholesale Solar. It's now Unbound Solar. We have 12 panels. They're all 300 watts each. So these panels in this racking system were really, really easy to install. It only took us a couple hours and in one day we had them all hooked up. The wiring on the other hand took a little bit more experience. So you could put these panels on your roof or you can ground mount them. They have a ground mounting system that you can also buy. We decided to make our own ground mounting system and just use the roof racking on top of the system that we put in place. So what we did was we put in these pillars so that they were all level and then they are on these galvanized beams. We made ours so that we could move it up or down for winter and sun, although we have not done that yet. And I don't know if we actually will move them because they are working well as is. So we have our eight pillars here and they are all level. And then we put these frames on or these on, on these brackets. And then this is what came with the system is you just screw these into your roof and attach these and attach these. It was super, super simple panel is already hooked up. It comes with a wire and all you have to do is hook it up to the next panel. They'll explain the wiring and give you a wire diagram for each of your individual setups. So ours would be different than someone else's, but ours are set up parallel in sets of three. So we have 12 panels, three of them are hooked together. So we have four wires coming into the combiner box. So there's actually eight wires coming in. There's four positive and four negative plus the ground, um, ground wiring. So this is our combiner box here, and this has all of the breakers in it for each set of panels. So all of the red ones are positive and the black ones are negative. The white one is the ground mount, and then the green comes out of the ground thus far there and runs to the house. So if you have any experience in electrical, then you'll be able to do this yourself. If you don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. So each one of these four is a set of three solar panels hooked together. So this is one, this is one, this is one, this is one. There's four coming in and that makes 12 panels total. Like I said, positive, negative. So the um, positive goes into the breakers. The negative goes into this left bus bar here and then they run out and they run down this and into the ground up to the house. So our system is right here. The house is right here. It's about 80 feet. They want you to get your solar system as close to your house as you can so that you don't lose any current from too much wire, but this is as close as we get in the full sun. So that's what we did. So our wires run through the conduit into the house right there. This green wire is the grounding, and this is our grounding bar that's in the ground, obviously. It's eight feet in the ground, and it's hooked up right there. So this gray conduit is the wire coming into the house, and this is our inverter. We have this Magnum sign inverter with the midnight attached to it, and they put this all together for us. So these usually don't come together, but um, Wholesale Solar or Unbound Solar put this all together for us for our system. So this is the wire that comes in from the house. We have our positive, our negative, and our ground. So that big positive wire there that is marked with red tape runs right into this positive bus bar right here. And then the negative black wire runs into this negative bus bar right here. And the ground wire runs into the ground, which is right there. So once the ground is hooked in there, then the ground, um, you have another ground wire that goes out to the actual grounding outside. Then you just need to wire your combiner box. So here is the wire going from the inverter to the combiner box. So what we have is we have four breakers in our house and we just did a mudroom, dining room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. And again, if you have any electrical experience, you'll be able to do this no problem. 
These are the wires coming in that are ran throughout the house. And so they're hooked up here into the breakers and the ground in the positive and negative. So this is the wire that hooks it up to the inverter. So it comes in here and the blue one is our generator and this one is the one that's in the house. And all we had to do were hook up the positive, the negative and the ground into the matching or corresponding outlets here. And they're actually labeled deep in there so you can see. And we hooked those up. And then we also hooked up our generator so that if there's ever days without sun, we can hook our generator right up and charge our battery. So this is our battery. We have the Discover battery. It's a 48 volt lithium ion battery. And since we have this large of a battery, if we ever wanted to add on another battery, it would also have to be a 48 volt battery, which is something I learned. And then this is our midnight controller here. And just a quick explanation of this because it's something I had no idea about. So the in here are the volts coming in currently. The watts are how many watts are currently coming in. The kilowatts is your total amount for the day. Your battery, this is how many volts your battery has, but it cannot go below 48.8 volts. And you need to call your solar installer when you set it up and they'll have you set limits. And this is our amperage coming in. This float means that our battery is full and it's not taking in too much more. So this float here, there's three stages while charging. The first is bulk and that's when you need a lot more sun and then it goes to absorb and then float means your battery is full and it's just floating there. The majority of our battery is between this 53.5 or so and between 51. Once it gets down to 51 volts, it's going to drop really quickly and your solar will probably probably turn off. And then here we have the breaker. So this breaker is your battery on and off. Our battery has a button right here for it's on and off. Also, we had to hook up our battery. So you hook up your battery with these huge things and the positive goes here and the negative goes up in there and then this breaker is for the battery this next breaker is for this control panel here the next breaker is for the actual solar panels that are outside off of that we run like our fridge we've only been here it's january so it's the worst time for solar um but what we run off of it are uh, is our refrigerator our laptops our internet our tv we probably run for like probably like six hours a day at night i'd say our charge our phones um you know a toaster or vacuum from time to time a fan and that sort of thing our lights we have 12 12 watt battery or light bulbs so really simple basic things so with that system we have plenty of solar panels we have sent plenty of solar power but since we're off grid we only have the one battery to store it if you are on grid and you have solar power all of your energy is stored in the grid system and you don't have to have battery backup the biggest cost when going solar especially off grid is your batteries and you can choose from lead acid batteries or lithium batteries we went with lithium just because of the longevity of them and over time it's actually the same around the same price as the lead acid batteries and so we just paid the upfront cost so our battery alone was six thousand dollars so right now with our one battery we have enough power to run our system with all of our things running for two days if we don't have sun for two days then we can run out of power and we would need to turn our generator on to refill our battery to fill our battery from our generator takes our generator running for about three to four hours and so that's not too bad so to decide how big of a system we needed we used wholesale solar's um like electricity calculator i forget what it's called but the first thing you need to do if you're going off grid or if you're thinking about using solar you need to go through your house and every single item that uses electricity you need to figure out how many watts that takes and add it all up Kilowatts is 1,000 watts, so we have a 4.8 kilowatt system, which it would be 4,800 watts. And we calculated that we would use around 3,000 watts a day. When you have solar power, if you have a sunny day and the sun is going and you have lots of power coming in, you can use as much power as you want. 
um, with all that power coming in. I could run a washer and dryer. I can run the vacuum. I can do all those things while the sun is out. But once the sun goes down, you only have what you have in your battery. And if it's not going to be sunny the next day, we've had a couple of days where it's so cloudy that r literally nothing comes in. And it is winter, so that's also we get less um, sunlight throughout the day. But that can happen. So we have ran out of power a couple times. At first, we didn't know how to read our solar system properly on that controller panel, and we didn't understand how what the vol how many volts and things we needed but now that we understand it we've still run out of power we ran out once yesterday um last night so it can happen if we got another battery we wouldn't need any more solar panels or anything we could store more power so our if the sun is out in the morning our battery will fill up by 10 o'clock in the morning and then we're just on float for the rest of the day so we have plenty of power when the sun is out but we don't have a lot of storage just because the cost of that battery is so much but the biggest downfall of us getting that huge battery is one it was six six grand for the battery and if we want to get another battery we have to get another six thousand dollar battery so that is why we only have one right now. We'll save up and whenever we need another one, we will get one. For now, we're really fine. We don't need any more energy than we already have, but um, we have plenty of solar panels and um, we could add on another one if we needed to and have double the storage. Our entire system was $16,000. So the solar panels and the whole package with the controller panel and the inverter and everything like, like that was 10 grand and then the battery was six grand. That did not include the wire that you had to run to the house. We had to buy the wire separately. And also we'll get a tax write off whenever we file taxes for having solar. So we should get some money back, but it's still, that's the upfront cost. The size of the wire that you need will depend on, and the cost of the wire will depend on how far your solar panels are from your house. So the farther it is, the more expensive your wire will be. Ours was around, I think it was like $250 for the ground, the positive and the negative wire to run to the house. So going through wholesale solar or unbound solar, um, I loved the people I worked with. I loved the sales team, the tech team, everything. We had such a great experience, except the shipping was horrendous. The shipping was really bad. So they went through XPO to ship it and XPO lost one of our pallets and didn't really tell us. Anyways, our shipment ended up being Four weeks late, they could not find it. It ended up being in like Missouri or somewhere. And we had already planned our trip here to set it all up and booked vacation and rented an Airbnb. And so it was a big hassle and we still have yet to be refunded for that. Um, I think our shipping, we paid like $400 for shipping and all they were giving us back was $600 even though it was a month late and we all lost a lot of money booking vacation and Airbnb and everything to set this system up. but. Um, that was terrible going through that and if you've watched our vlog you would know that and you've been through the frustration with us but I know that there are absolutely probably cheaper ways to do this DIYers do-it-yourselfers find your solar panels buy them used go with different batteries I know that this is what we chose to do it worked for us so far so good um, the setup wasn't too terrible. It was definitely daunting, especially looking at the manuals for the inverters and things. But if you have any questions, I'm happy we went through Wholesale Solar because we had someone to call to talk us through everything. And all of the people that we worked with were so helpful and um, really educated on the topic. So that was great also. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and yeah, I hope this video is helpful. I spent forever on YouTube trying to figure out what we were going to do for solar, how we were going to do it, how you wire the system and all of that. And so if you have any more in-depth questions, I would be happy to help wherever I can. But if you haven't yet, go watch our installation videos and all of our other YouTube videos renovating this off-grid cabin. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like. That really helps me out. And thanks for watching.